In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 18. Again, Jesus asked them, Who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? The Word of the Lord The mob's intentions didn't matter. This unruly gang of Jesus' enemies, comprised of Judas, a large detachment of soldiers, and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees, were a formidable force, to be sure. But it didn't matter that they outnumbered Jesus and his disciples, or that they were armed with weapons, torches, and lanterns. It didn't matter that they sought to arrest Jesus, put him on trial, and crucify him. Yes, God used their actions to fulfill his plan to save us, but that was his doing, not theirs. Ultimately, their intentions were irrelevant. Peter's intentions didn't matter either. It didn't matter that he wanted to save Jesus by preventing his arrest and crucifixion. One sword among so many others pointed back at him wouldn't have made a difference anyway, even if his did a bit of damage. Nor did it matter that earlier in the evening, Peter had boasted of his devotion to Jesus, claiming that he would rather die than deny him. His courage in making those claims and his drawing the sword didn't change anything because they would not prevent the multitude from taking Jesus away. That was going to happen no matter what. Really, none of these things mattered insofar as they would not affect Jesus' mission. His intentions, his heart, his mind, his will were the only ones that mattered. Earlier that evening, Jesus prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Jesus welcomed the Father's will that he die, for he and the Father are one in will and spirit. And so he went forth as an uncomplaining lamb on his own accord in perfect control, ready to die willingly. Indeed, he submitted to the cross on his own terms, not those of the mob, and he would defeat the spiritual forces of evil and establish his kingdom according to his plan and not Peter's. No, despite appearances, the mob didn't win and Peter didn't lose. Their intentions really didn't change anything. Instead, Jesus used their sinful actions and misguided attempts at assuming control to accomplish what he had always set out to do, that is, to pay the price for our sins against our holy God. The same I am who brought the universe into existence and who by the power of his name knocked the mob down to the ground, had the power to destroy death and give life to those who believe through his death on the cross. This salvation does not come from human effort. It only comes to the church by the cup of suffering Jesus drank at his passion. Christ's sacrifice was the only action that could remove our hatred as displayed by the mob, our irrational and misguided attempts like those of Peter, and our cowardice and fear like the disciples whom St. Matthew and St. Mark report deserted Jesus and fled in fear. Jesus had tried to tell his disciples about the necessity of his cross, but they had been slow to grasp its importance. At times they thought they did not need the cross. At others, they were more concerned with just being disciples of this great man. And often they clung to the false hope of an earthly kingdom. Do not make the same mistakes. Cast aside all pretense that you can provide your own salvation by what you do. Put away any thought that you can save yourself. 
Bury your sinful intentions and desires for earthly glory each day as you drown your old Adam in contrition and repentance. And know that by the power of the Holy Spirit, working through the gospel and by faith, God will set your eyes on the cross of Jesus and allow you to see the glory hidden within. He will move your hearts to rejoice that you stand before God as righteous and holy only by the work of his Son. And he will enlighten you to believe that because Jesus embraced the cup of suffering, you have peace, forgiveness, and life everlasting as a gift of his grace. You are among those the Father has given to Jesus, the elect called by the gospel, never to be lost to the darkness, but kept safe in Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.